Hello and welcome to Simon Says Artwork. In this video I'm going to be doing a drawing on one of these pages here from this A5 sketchbook of brown paper. Now I'm not going to show you the ink drawing because that's already going to have been done. Basically all I do is take a reference picture of Lindsay Hoyle who's the Speaker of the House of uh, Parliament at the moment and I use a fine liner, draw him on there and then we pick up from the point where I'm creating some texture and some kind of messy atmosphere around that ink drawing. It's a bit of an experiment so I don't know how it's going to work out before I did it and all right let's get started. I'd drawn this picture of Lindsay Hoyle because I'd been watching quite a bit of politics online and I just thought he always seemed like, I don't know, you know, like a cartoon owl from a Disney film, like quite sad and um, just seemed to have the weight of the situation bearing down on him and yet be basically uh, resigned to the fact that his job was just to allow it to happen to a large extent and to only try to reel it back in within certain parameters because these are incredibly privileged politicians who are allowed to say and do a lot of what they'd like. They've, they've gone to the best schools and lived the most privileged life. So I saw him as someone who was a bit beaten down in his job. It might not be true, but that's the impression that I got from his face and his tone of voice. And then after I'd drawn it on this toned paper, what I'd never done is applied paint. I certainly hadn't done it in this way where you're just splattering um, splashes on top. And I just thought because it's such a mucky and messy business, the business of politics and and discussion and debate in um, in Parliament, I thought this is going to be something where it should seem suitable to be a, look almost like a food fight, that someone who looks, you know, uh, almost depressed at the, at the centre of it, he's got to say order, order once in a while and try to wrangle these adult children so this was very much just a test I thought this could completely destroy the drawing and not work at all I might have to redraw parts of the drawing on top again and when it was at this stage I thought yeah some of it's going to be completely obscured and um, and I was just uncertain about a lot of it but it's very rare that I sacrifice a drawing to experimentation like this so it was worth trying and I wasn't sure about which colours. I think in hindsight I would have picked more of a specific colour palette, whereas it's almost rainbow colours, which has obviously got different connotations than what's uh, relevant for Parliament or, or politicians. It's not anything where there is any kind of progressive movements or, or kind of consideration for the gay community. So instead it's more just decorative. And I think in the future I'll be more conscious of using rainbow colours more thoughtfully with a, a subject that it suits. And then colours for an image like this that are maybe muckier. I mean, I do have browns in there, but now you see me trying to push it away just to try and preserve his face. Because I just didn't know how much of his face you'd be able to see afterwards. And something which... I should know, but I just didn't realise at the time, is that as soon as you use red, yellow and blue enough, it becomes brown. So part of the job is to try and put the colours back in again, because otherwise you're just going to have brown, which is, as I said, it's probably more suitable for what you get in Parliament, colour palette wise, but... It's not that aesthetically interesting. So I start reintroducing the primary colours again.
it was something which I think I would have done the drawing to a, a greater extent if I would have known the result afterwards. And now that I do, I should repeat this process and try it again with drawings that are more finished. Using a tissue to pull parts back, I don't think is a bad thing. It's just something which I did perhaps unnecessarily because I didn't realize how opaque or transparent the finish would be. And so I suppose because I did this, I still don't, but I think that if it would have been completely obscured by the pigment, then it would have given me the opportunity to draw parts back in and leave other parts covered, which probably would have been more interesting. So I might try this again just because for a series of drawings on tone paper, I think it will be something which um, could create a more interesting dynamic. I perhaps need to mix colours better in the in the watercolour palette, uh, the little wells in the uh, watercolour set. Because for this I was just going deep blue, like a cadmium red, and then a bright yellow. Give it time to soak up and, and soak into it. But again, I just thought, well, I might have just ruined this. It might just be destroyed. I don't know if it's going to look very good once it dries. But I don't know if this would have worked quite so well if I would have used watery gouache or acrylic. I do think the yellow is quite nice on top. It does um, brighten up the area a lot more which it will do I suppose but it's because the blue is so deep that the yellow is a it's a powerful tone to have uh, splashed around in there and I wanted it to look more like custard than anything which is uh, flowery or or too uh, pleasant. Just because I see politics as such a messy business. Especially during this time where we were steeped in uh, COVID discussions and Boris Johnson was being a complete failure as he always is. And um, Lindsay Hoyle wasn't really pulling his weight like we all wished he would. And instead he looked, you know, resigned to the fact that it will be what it will be. So part of it was uh, drawn out of frustration. But he does have a, you know, a quality to his face which looks quite professorial. As I said, much like a, an owl in a Disney cartoon. That's what it reminds me of. Because he has large... Um, oval sort of eyes you know where it's not as though his eyes are little slivers like some people have it's it's more rounded shapes for his eyes which make him look a bit sleepy and like myself he's got quite a, a large nose and then a bit of a hint of a grimace on his face which is all understandable I have to excuse the background noise it's a bit of a seagull party outside my window even though it's currently just gone quarter to four in the morning that I'm recording this commentary. So I don't know what's going on. So I use a cardboard box that's fairly deep so that I can uh, splash and splatter around paint without worrying about it going on my keyboard or monitor. I didn't have a lot of space in my bedroom and that's where I was uh, working. So I didn't have a studio space and it took a long time to dry and I was looking at it thinking this could have not worked at all. It all looks a little bit watery and puddly and I was surprised with how well it actually set. 
afterwards. I was quite impressed with how watercolor sits on this color on this paper. Sorry. So, as I said, there'll be different experiments in the future. I will probably use watercolor in the conditional, uh, traditional sense initially, and then splashes and splatters on top. If I don't become too precious over whatever it is that I've drawn and painted, that is part of the problem with my process. Maybe I should do it backwards. Maybe I should do the drawing, then the splash like this, and then do um, a bit more careful painting on top. That might make more sense. That way I can build up certain areas after all of the splatter texture has occurred. So yeah, this is basically me allowing it to dry and thinking that doesn't actually look so good. And then when it does dry, look at all this misty, ethereal texture. So that's what it initially looked like. Became that, which I think is just beautiful. It almost looks like he's on fire. Not that I want that for Lindsay Hoyle. And then it dries quite beautifully. Okay, that is the drawing done. Well, it's drawing, painting, mixed media. That's it done. Now, it doesn't quite look as bold there as it does on a photograph. I think it's because of the light in the room at the moment. But uh, basically, I think it adds a lot to the image. But I should probably go back in with watercolour and ink and height, heighten certain aspects of it. But uh, for the time being, it just basically taught me that you can actually do quite interesting effects with watercolour paint on top of uh, a water-resistant ink. And it's, uh, it works even on toned paper. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.